we're back. Welcome to Fireside Chats with Gaslight. Today we have Doug Alcorn. Welcome, Doug. Are you so excited to be here? Yeah, thanks for having me. That's good. All right. For our first question, how did you become a developer? Well, I've been around computers forever. Um, I remember when I was a little kid, our school had one computer in it, and our class would have like once a week, we would all go to the library and we would stare at the computer and somebody would get to use it. And that was really exciting to me. Um, I learned how to make turtles draw around and I learned how to play games on it. And um, I can remember getting my first computer when I was like 12 and I just always used computers. And then when I went to college, I studied not computers, which was kind of funny because as soon as I got out of college, I got a job doing computers. Um, and I've always just been in programming just as long as almost I can remember. Um, and I went, you know, trying to learn just the hardest kind of nerdy stuff that you could about programming, like doing Linux kernel programming all the way to fun stuff like I've never been paid for game programming, but I've toyed around with it and, um, you know, and then of course, just lots of businessy kind of programming too. Uh, and then web development for the last, I don't know how many years, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the question, how did you find Gaslight? <laughs> so there was in our community, this was before Meetup existed. Um, we had a user group and we called it the XP Cincinnati and it didn't have anything to do with Windows XP, even though we were often confused for that. It had to do with extreme programming. And this was in the year 2000 uh, when Kent Beck wrote his book, Extreme Programming Explained. And there was anywhere from 10 to 30 of us that would show up on a monthly basis over at Children's Hospital and we would eat pizza and talk about agile software programming or agile software delivery using extreme programming. And it was mostly a bunch of us guys just complaining that our bosses wouldn't let us do it. And eventually most of us quit our jobs to go do something that would let us do more agile stuff, more XP. And um, which was kind of ironic because we were freelancing from home when one of the core tenets of, of XP was pair programming and none of us were pair programming because we were all hanging out by ourselves in our basements. And so eventually we said, you know, it would be cool if we had a, a group here in town where we could do this, this agile development together. And that's pretty much how Gaslight started. Ooh, that's awesome. That's really cool. And so you've been with Gaslight since day one which leads us to the question, what's your favorite part? I think, and I, I'm, I, this is the part where I don't want to sound too much like a cliche. Um, I, I love the people here at Gaslight. I love the stuff that we do together. Um, you know, we started out together. It was about being together as opposed to being on our own. And the relationships that I have with people at work are, you know, I think the best thing about it. Um, you know, I, my best friends over the years have, have been at work and I still have best friends at work. And um, I just think that, you know, even now as we're in this kind of weird um, shelter in place, mm -hmm. self quarantine, um, you know, the people of Gaslight are still trying to pitch in together. And I know everybody pitches in together and everybody says the people are the best thing. Um, and that's right. probably true for a lot of different organizations. Um, and I don't know that we're necessarily unique about it, but I do love the people that we work with. And I do look forward to seeing everyone, even if it's just on video camera mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Heck yeah. Yeah. I think our stand-ups are really nice where we all get to see each other and check in. And even if it's only once a day, it's better than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, we, 
we have this time where we're working from home and there's been a lot of pressure over the years building up to remote work and um, you know all the smart companies are working from home and we were kind of a little bit of a stick in the mud because we kind of we you know we were almost insisting on co-locating our teams together um, and that was our big, that was almost a differentiator that yes, everybody works out of our office all the time. We look each other in the eye, we sit next to each other, you know, our desk touch and, and we made a big deal about that. And now of course we don't have that. Um, but I still think that some of that connectedness is spilling over. I don't know when all this is over, maybe everybody's going to want to continue to work from home. Um, but I feel like that, um, that people really miss that connectedness. And uh, I feel like that being on our own at home full time is not all it's cracked up to be. And I hope that we'll get together again and be able to work in the same room and draw on the same whiteboard and um, be able to spend time together again. Maybe it's, well, it, well, there's no way it'll be the same in the future as it was in the past. That's the nature of change. But I look forward to those days when we can spend time together as people in the same room again. Yep. Grab, grab a lunch and have some story mapping sessions. Yeah. Those aren't the same over virtualness, but well, thank you, Doug. I appreciate your time and all your, your insights. Um, well, everybody, and thank you for listening and joining us and we will catch you next time. And we will.